and welcome Selina. Selina um, comes uh, from uh, British Columbia, by the way, a province I very much love. And you're going to talk about e-health in British Columbia, regulatory overview, lessons learned, and strategies for the future. And we are very much looking forward to what you have developed over the last eight years in your province. Selina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alex. I uh, appreciate the warm welcome. Um, Matthias, is the, is the device live? Okay. Great. So, as Alex mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm based in Vancouver, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of West Coast experience um, over the last uh, a few years um, as how e health initiatives have been introduced. Um, so BC has made quite a lot of progress over the last few years on its e-health initiatives. Um, it's kind of ha carried out sort of regular reviews of priorities and um, program objectives and, and adapted the strategies accordingly. Um, the latest document was kind of set out in 2014, in February, um, which was called Setting Priorities for the BC Health System, which set out a number of strategies and priorities. And it's sort of interesting to note that two of those strategies uh, one of them was sort of a call for more skilled change management. I think that's a theme we'll probably see throughout um, our discussion today, uh, just because of the massive, um, the complexity of the system and all the interlocking pieces. So there's a lot of complexity. So change management is, um, you know, we see a lot of those uh, work keywords around. Um, also information management and technology, the availability and accessibility of um, different kinds of information. Um, uh, to patients and uh, you know healthcare providers. So just before I get in, I just wanted to highlight some of the success stories in, in BC. One of them is sort of the Healthy Families BC website, which um, is part of their sort of Web 2.0 strategy, which kind of goes beyond just providing information to patients in that kind of preventative healthcare space to actually allowing you know people to interact with each other, community blogs, information sharing, and those kinds of things. So that's kind of what they call the sort of Web. 2.0, so it's the new generation of social networking and, and healthcare. Um, they so successfully set up a First Nation health authority um, to address that particular segment of uh, the population, which is a bit more vulnerable um, for you know healthcare prevention strategies and, and treating them in remote areas. Um, uh, I understand there's about half a million uh, people in BC who are now able to access their lab results online. So that's a, a pretty big achievement. Um, and as well, we have an interoperable electronic health record initiative. Uh, which has about 10,000 active users at the moment. So that's a, a success story as well. But there's a lot of challenges still to be overcome. Uh, you know, I think a lot of similar common themes that you um, see here with our German colleagues, slow alignment among all the different health um, you know, departments and uh, users, um, as well as buy-in. It's difficult to get buy-in from a lot of the users of the system. Uh, limited capacity within the system itself to deliver a system-wide change. Um, and it's the whole accessibility issue, um, you know, quality and availability of data. Okay. Which, which uh, slide should slide. we go to? Uh, the first slide, just the agenda, would be great. Thank you. Um, so today I, I was uh, going to talk a bit about, um, I guess, providing a Canadian context. I know we've been talking about sort of very uh, specific areas of, of uh, sort of healthcare, but um, in our discussions, in a preparation for this meeting, Alex asked me to provide kind of an overview of Canadian context and how it sort of works with our uh, insurance and our system generally for the non-Canadians in the room. So I will look at that, and then I'll kind of um, look a bit more detail in BC, uh, just provide a high-level overview of the kinds of initiatives, uh, particularly with respect to e-health, um, who the key players are, how the system works generally, so you can see uh, what the system looks like, uh, typically in a, at a provincial level, um, and also lessons learned so far um, and strategies perhaps for the future that we can maybe engage people in the room uh, to talk about as well. So, um, Alex, if you could change it to the next slide. Thank you. So, before I get into sort of specific um, expenditures, so for the sort of non-Canadians in the room or, or those who aren't familiar with our healthcare system, um, basically, federal and provincial governments share responsibility for delivering um, health care in Canada. So we have a national program, uh, which is uh, universal uh, health care. It's called, called, referred to often as Medicare. 
And we, uh, it's made up basically, it's not a national program in, in that it's that its own program, but it has 13 interlocking provincial and territorial health insurance plans. So they all share uh, common sort of features um, and as well as basic levels of coverage. So the main legislation in Canada governing healthcare is the Canada Health Act. And it sets out the principles that govern healthcare uh, in the Canadian system, which include universality, accessibility, portability, comprehensiveness, and public administration. So those are the foundation on which our healthcare system is built on. So the Canada Health Act um, also sets out the provincial and territorial health insurance, um, the criteria that the provincial and territorial health plans need to meet in order to obtain um, their federal contributions via that Canada Health Transfer. So there'll be, um, you know, they'll be eligible for federal funding and this, uh, the Canada, Canada Health Act sets out the criteria for that. In terms of the organizational level, m most provinces have regionalized health care, which means that the region is going to be responsible for the health needs of the residents. So the province will oversee, you know, the sort of main strategies and set the policy priorities, uh, and there'll be the regions that actually deliver um, the, the, um, the meet the, the health needs of, the, of its residents. So regional health authorities can own the hospitals, uh, run the hospitals, um, take care of long-term care and home care, um, also responsible, and they're accountable for response, um, for efficiency and quality in the system. Um, on its current trajectory, I think this is a similar case with many um, countries in the world that uh, our health system is seen as being unsustainable if it sort of continues on its uh, current path. Um, and that's because costs are increasing and business as usual will not sort of meet the growing demand. So at the moment, uh, healthcare Canada um, spending in Canada is projected to reach about 219 billion, uh, which works out to on average about $6,100 per Canadian. Um, spending by province ranges sort of um, just a little under $6,000 in BC to uh, 7,000 in Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, so healthcare spending now represents about 11% of our GDP, which is quite significant. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to kind of see what the top three cost drivers are. So hospitals uh, represent the bulk of it, drugs, um, and then physicians uh, come in at third. Next slide, please. So it's hard uh, to sort of see this map, but um, it's just kind of a map of different costs by province. Um, and I just wanted to give a shout out to the uh, Canada Health InfoWay. Um, uh, we've got some folks in the room that we can chat a bit more on, during the panel session. Um, but the uh, Canada Health Info is an important sort of um, player. It's sort of the national umbrella organization which facilitates um, the interoperability of existing sort of federal, provincial, and territorial um, electronic health initiatives. So they um, are a very key player. Um, and uh, it was established back in 2001, and I think um, uh, Mike will be able to tell us a bit more about it. Uh, next slide, please, Alex. Um, I thought uh, also OECD was sort of interesting. They published sort of how does Canada compare to other countries in terms of healthcare spending. So you can see that um, average, it's sort of, uh, this is, I believe is uh, in the US dollars. So it's uh, Canada's in the middle there and, and Germany's about 4,920 per person. Um, but it's about the same amount of GDP. It's about 11% of spending. So Canada is actually behind most OECD nations um, in the redesign of its health system. Um, it also ranks near the bottom of OECD nations in terms of quality and outcomes of healthcare system. Next slide, please. Um, so just moving to, to BC, so our population, just look at demographics because those are important drivers, um, is about 4.6 million people. Um, and of course, you know, as with most jurisdictions, we have a, an aging population. Um, and life expectancy is increasing. So those are driving a lot of challenges in the system. Um, in BC, healthcare costs represent about 40% of the government's sort of budget um, spending, and the, uh, re the revenues sort of come from a mix of provincial um, and federal taxes, fees, um, and as well as other uh, government sources. Uh, next slide, please. So some of the um, challenges you'll see are very similar to, to the ones in Germany. So changing demographics, aging population, um, the continuous need to update facilities, technologies, and equipment. Um, also, you know, new diseases. Um, you know, a lot of our system is focused on acute care, short term, um, and not necessarily focused on uh, chronic um, illnesses. Um, 
And we're trying to shift to more preventative regimes, which requires more education, health promotion, and disease prevention. So all of these factors are together creating pressures on um, not only BC system, but other systems as well. So one of the you know, initiatives of sort of eHealth um, is to move information online to reduce delays and improve the quality of, of um, information that's available to health service providers. Uh, next slide, please. So there are several pieces of uh, legislation in BC that, um, that sort of deal with healthcare. So the Public Health Act is sort of the overarching piece of legislation. Um, and then there are specific sort of uh, legislation under that um, to help deal with different aspects of it. Um, uh, and then there's one specifically for eHealth, which deals with the protection of information. Next slide, please. So uh, as I mentioned, um, in BC, uh, it's sort of organized, it's the regional uh, entities that kind of deliver the uh, services, but the BC Ministry of Health is the main um, policy authority. Um, and then the minister, under that is the health authorities that each works with them. So there are five regional health authorities and a First Nation health authorities. Um, there's the Health Insurance BC, which kind of deals, administers the medical coverage. Um, there's also the provincial health officer and various colleges, boards, and commissions, um, as well as you know uh, private sector vendors as well. So these are all players in in the, the healthcare system. Uh, next slide, please. So currently in BC, um, personal health information is held in different places. So records could be held by you know the doctors and pharmacists and opticians, um, and those ones are sort of. Um, will not typically be moved to an electronic health system. Um, all of this personal health information is protected by legislation, um, and there's a phased implementation of BC's electronic health records, which started back in 2009, and it's an ongoing process. So as you know, people, sort of patients encounter the system, um, records of that will be stored on the system. That's sort of the idea. Uh, one of the challenges, and I think that this is similar in other jurisdictions, is that BC's healthcare system is not supported by a single um, information management or um, information technology organization. So each organization will have its own systems that's responsible for its own support. So that's one of the alignment issues um, in trying to bring together those um, pieces of technology and databases. So also each different organization, um, because it's regionally based, will have different challenges in that you have different uh, demographics in each region and different demands. So even though all the parties are working toward the same goal, um, there are different organizational priorities at different times. So that's one of the challenges in terms of trying to bring it together um, as a system-wide change. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of information management and information technology priorities in BC, um, as I mentioned, we have a health two web sort of 2.0 strategy, which uh, aims for preventative um, and you know, taking more personal responsibility for your health. Um, there's also a priority to develop province-wide system of integrated primary and um, uh, primary care, um, and that sort of goes to electronic medical records as well as the telehealth solutions. Um, another priority is providing high quality and accessible acute care, um, and uh, that goes to clinical information systems. Um, and then finally, um, the whole initiative around provincial electronic health records um, has also been set as a priority. Next slide, please. Um, it's a bit hard to see for those in the room, but uh, components of eHealth, there are different sort of um, components that make up the whole eHealth initiatives um, that cover the whole range of services, whether it's diagnostics, drugs, um, record keeping, um, as well as sort of physician information technology um, and lab solutions. So all of these and telehealth, these are all sort of interacting in, in, with the system and form part of the eHealth initiative. Next slide, please. So in BC, there, um, the Ministry of Health is the overarching provincial organization. There's also a Health Leadership Council, which is basically the senior governance committee in the health sector, and they kind of provide direction to the, to the regions on uh, priorities. So after certain reviews, um, they decided to implement a new sort of governance model last year. Um, and this is called the um, Standing Committee of Information Management and Information Technology. 
Uh, and this entity is kind of res responsible to provide direction and guidance to the supporting kind of committees and working groups. So underneath it, there are subcommittees. Um, so there's, uh, you know, if you're familiar with Canadian, uh, we like to have committees on, on things and talk about things quite a lot. Um, so the responsibility of the standing committee is to create um, other standing committees for key functional areas, including information privacy and security, health solution deliveries, and uh, as well as the health technology strategy. So these are all ongoing initiatives um, at this time. Uh, next slide, please. So e-health in BC, so privacy um, is, is a huge issue um, as, as in most jurisdictions. So there is a specific um, legislation that protects um, health information. So health information, of course, is also protected under the broader um, privacy legislation. Um, but the Electronic Sort of Health um, Protection Act um, sort of sets the parameters of who can access that information. For example, physicians, nurses, and administrators will have different levels of access um, according to the kind of information they need. Um, and at this point, there was one market sort of constraint that is unique to Canada, which I wanted to kind of just talk about it a little bit. So um, a lot of the data legislation, privacy protection legislation in Canada requires that uh, you know, private information of Canadians be stored in Canada. So that actually, because Canada is such a small market, there's very limited ability for um, the storage uh, hosting solutions in Canada, high quality ones. So that means that, for example, the BC government, although it would like to adopt cloud solutions, um, its options are very limited because a lot of those providers are US providers, for example, which might end up in a cloud in the US, which would violate our privacy laws. So those are, that's a unique sort of Canadian constraint um, in terms of that we don't have those kinds of servers here to store information. And it'd be interesting to hear uh, Michael's thoughts on <laughs> what, how to uh, address those issues. Uh, next slide, please. So in BC, the Auditor General has carried out two reviews. Uh, one is, was a review of the Panorama Public Health System uh, most recently this year. Um, and then in 2009, uh, looked at sort of the electronic health record, record implementation in BC. So Panorama, just for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is um, an information technology system that's implemented to kind of manage um, information around sort of communicable disease outbreaks and immunization programs across Canada. So um, this, as I understand, has been fully implemented in BC. Um, so the Auditor General um, looked at the implementation of that program, and uh, these are the kinds of the issues they had identified. So system stability issues, um, cost overruns, delays in delivery of that uh, technology, uh, also sort of lack of an overall communication strategy uh, for health professionals, um, and the absence of kind of measurable objectives. So these were sort of the things that they had um, flagged. Um, so I think whenever you have sort of large and complex, you know, IT projects, these, there are some, a lot of risks associated with that. So the issues will be around sort of system quality, um, budget and timelines. And I think that's just very much a sort of project management um, issue. Okay. Next slide, please. So just to kind of wrap up, um, so Canadian systems kind of need a fundamental overhaul to improve quality, access and outcomes and sustainability. So I think the messaging here is that basically process innovations are helpful, um, but there is need for a larger sort of system-wide transformation. So, and Canadians have done really well in sort of creating those innovations, but we are lagging in terms of adopting them and implementing them in an effective way. And I think I'm gonna end on that note if there's, uh, and leave it to the panel discussion. Thank you.